Hey, welcome back! Time for five more D&D Quick Tips. Now, these are the tips that I have learned running and playing games for the last 40 years. Uh, this is the fourth video of an ongoing series of tips, and I'll go ahead and throw the full playlist in the description down below. Now, while my tips are geared towards Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, many of them should be useful no matter which version you play. For tip number one, I like to foreshadow major events, NPCs, and plot lines early on in my games. If the players pick up on it, great. If not, that is fine too. I find that doing this gives me a gauge on how whatever it is will be received, and I can choose to use it as is, tweak it, or straight up scrap it. You know, there's nothing wrong with a few red herrings now and then. Tip number two is just to learn something new to advance your skills and abilities. Now this is true no matter what it is, including your hobbies. Like, you know, D&D. Don't be afraid if it's outside of your comfort zone, though. If you decide you don't like it, you never have to do it again. Now, personally, I'm learning how to draw isometric and side cutaway dungeon maps. Up until now, all of my maps have been the top down, maybe with a bit of hatching, but probably not. So I'm really enjoying figuring out the isometric angles myself. And you know, I discovered it doesn't take a great amount of drawing skill, lucky for me, um, just some basic shapes and lines. Have you ever tried any new skills lately? What was it? Did you enjoy it and stick with it, or did you try something else instead? Tip number three. In addition to regular treasures such as gold, gems, magic swords, decks of many things, um, go ahead and throw in a few mundane magical items such as a set of paired scrolls so that the players can communicate if they split into groups. Uh, to keep it limited, you only give them a small uh, set of index cards, each group gets one. Or if playing on a virtual tabletop, set up one screen, one tiny little screen just for their communication, and only let them write with the freehand tool and no erasing allowed. Last time I did this, everybody started out writing big, and by the time they couldn't use it any longer, they were writing notes inside of the other notes. It was good times with lots of laughing. And, but, and this is going to be tip number four, if your players don't seem to be having a good time, then switch something up. If nothing else, a sudden unexpected combat or the ground opening up beneath your feet to plunge them into the underground onkeg nest usually works pretty good to break up the boredom. Of course, sometimes the players need to work to defend something, so tip number five would be have an invading horde of monsters come and the players or the characters need to defend the wall of the town castle or the hut, the house, you know, whatever makes sense. But let them plan out the defense strategy with a set number of resources. You know, the captain of the guard, whoever would normally be doing that, is unavailable, incompetent, whatever the, the case might be plot-wise. It's the players who are going to be setting up this defense. Give them all the resources, let them figure out how to do it, and then go ahead and put that plan into action. Uh, 5e has mass combat rules. Uh, they're uh, downloadable from the Wizards website. Otherwise, most editions have uh, mass combat rules. A uh, really nice uh, set of mass combat rules I came across recently on Drive-Thru RPG is called Buy This Poleaxe. Uh, they're fun, um, and it's free. And uh, I think it would pr pretty much with any edition, so... Bonus tip. Have you seen how many 5e books have came out? How many have came out since you started your most recent 5e campaign? Now, I think a new house rule that I will be implementing for 5e games in the future is that no new rule books will be allowed in existing campaigns unless everybody in the group agrees to let it in. Now, this is because a new set of rules could potentially change how the entire game is played. It could, it could have huge impacts on your existing structure in the game, have huge impacts on your NPCs, you're going to find yourself redoing a lot of stuff. So I'm thinking that any new rule books that come out, I'm going to go ahead and just put a moratorium on it and say if it came out after the campaign started, we're probably not going to be using it in the campaign, and we'll discuss which books we allow in any existing or future campaigns. But anyway, thanks for taking a look. What quick tips would you add? Please let me know in the comments down below. Catch you next time. Bye!
Hey, thanks for watching the video. Please give a like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Catch you next time. Bye.